Psalm 89 and verse 26, he shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. This is preacher Chris Christian, pastor of the Lewis Lane Central Baptist Church in Church Hill, Tennessee. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of the Rock of My Salvation program. It's always our great joy and pleasure to come your way uh, each and every time uh, with the Rock of My Salvation program or, or if, if whatever opportunity that we have to preach or to teach uh, from the Word of God. And uh, it's our heart's desire and prayer to God that we might be a blessing to God's people, that we might be a help, strength, and encouragement uh, to somebody along life's way, that we might uh, bring glory and honor uh, to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we might see somebody uh, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And uh, we've been uh, uh, teaching uh, from the book of First John, uh, and on the first uh, or the last two uh, episodes, we uh, looked at uh, John, uh, First John chapter one, and today we're going to be uh, looking in First John chapter two, verses one through seven. First John chapter two, verses one through seven, and uh, verse number seven is the key to to uh, the these first seven verses. Uh, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you had, which you have heard from the beginning. And we'd like to uh, 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 speak to you uh, in this particular episode on the subject of, of the, an old commandment. Not a new thing, not a new thing, but the old thing, the thing that God has uh, declared from the beginning, but he, he uh, in, in looking again in uh, First John chapter two, beginning in verse number one, reading down through verse number seven, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, himself also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. I accidentally read uh, one, more, one verse more than I intended to. I intended to stop at verse number seven, but that's all right. We're going to have some overlap uh, in in some of these uh, uh, passages that we're looking at, but uh, uh, as I said, we we want to speak to you on the subject of an old commandment. And he he said hereby uh, in or the, in verse number one rather he said, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And so we are commanded not to sin. We're not to live uh, lives of sin. And uh, 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 if we're saved by the grace of God, my beloved friend, we're, we're supposed to, uh, to forsake unrighteousness. We're to, supposed to forsake the things of the world. And John tells us here later on, he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so we are, uh, my beloved, we are commanded not to sin. Leviticus 18 and 5, he said, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which, a, which if a man do, he shall live in them. That's what he said to the children of Israel. And then we're told in Ezekiel 18, 4, and then again in Ezekiel 18 and 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And then again in Romans 6 and 23, which we quote uh, 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 great uh, much of the time, uh, uh, just about every preacher does, Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. And so, uh, my beloved, we are commanded that we are to sin not. We're not supposed to sin. God has commanded us to sin not. But we have a problem, my beloved, as uh, we mentioned in a past uh, uh, in in a past uh, podcast 
we have uh, the, the problem that we have inherited a sin nature and the very best that we can do we're going to sin and come short of the glory of god again as the scripture said i'll have sinned and come short of the glory of god but i'm glad that he didn't stop there but he declared that we are justified freely through the redemption that is in christ jesus and then again uh, romans 6 and 23 said the wages of sin is death but thank God, I, I'm glad that he didn't stop there. He, he declared, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we are commanded not to sin. And he 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 he, com he tells us here, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. But I want you to notice what he follows that uh, what uh, that the word that he follows that sentence up with, uh, the very first word in the next sentence. And he said, "And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, my beloved friend." He he didn't say, uh, "My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not." But if any man sin, he said, and if any man sin, because John knew that we were going to sin, because we were born in sin, we were shaping in iniquity, as we quoted in a, a past podcast. And so we inherited a sin nature from our father, Adam, and from our mother, Eve. But thanks be unto God, I'm glad that Christ Jesus came into this world, Paul said, uh, to save sinners of whom I am chief. And I feel like, I feel the same way that Paul did. I can't understand why that God would save somebody like me, but oh, I'm so thankful that he did. I'm, I'm so thankful that Jesus loved me so much that he was willing to bleed and die for me on the cross of Calvary. So we are commanded that we sin not. But my beloved friend, we can't help but sin because we were born in sin and we were shaping in iniquity. You see, my beloved, when we were saved by the grace of God, uh, we inherited a new nature. We received the nature of Christ. We were given a new nature and we were made a, a new creation in Christ. But the problem is that we didn't get rid of our flesh. We still have the flesh that we've got to deal with every day. And there's a battle my beloved friend, between the spirit and the flesh every day. And uh, beloved, it's according to which one we feed. It's which one's going to have the victory in our life. Now, if we, uh, uh, beloved, if we spend the time that we ought to in reading and studying the word of God, then uh, my beloved friend, and, and, and we pray and, and meditate upon the word of God like that we need to, and we go to church like that we ought to, and we hear the word of God preached, and we hear it taught, and we heard it sung about, and we heard it hear it testified about. My beloved friend, we feed our, ourselves with the spiritual food. Then our inner man, our spiritual man, is going to be strong. But I want to tell you, beloved friend, if we fail in the things that we need to do, if we fail to read God's word, if we fail to study, if we fail in our prayer life, if we fail in going down to the house of God in obedience to Hebrews 10, 25, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. If we fail in that, and we do not hear the word of God preached, and we do not hear the word of God uh, uh, taught, and we do not hear the word of God testified of, and we do not hear the word of God sung about, and we do not feed our spirit and our, uh, with the things of God, with the spiritual food, my beloved friend, and we uh, feed ourselves with the things of this world. I'm talking about Hollywood and all like that and, and all the natural things, and we fail in the spiritual things. Well, my beloved friend, this outer man's going to begin to, 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 to get the preeminence and he's going to be, he's going to get stronger. And before we know it, we're going to find out that we're messed up with God. But he said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. And if you do sin, we have an advocate with the father. That means we've got to go between. We've got somebody, my beloved, that, that will go before God, the father, and that will make our case before him. What a blessing that is. I'm glad that we're not on our own, but we've got an advocate. We've got somebody to represent us thank God with God the Father. What a blessing that is. He said, and he is the propitiation. As I said in the in the past, the best definition that I that I've ever heard of that come from Brother J. W. Depew, a dear departed uh, uh, brother in the Lord, one of my faith heroes in this life. 
uh, 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 beloved, uh, here just went home to be with the Lord here just uh, uh, two or three years ago, something like that. But uh, he, his definition of that word pr propitiation was penalty payment made. I'm glad that he is the propitiation for our for our sins. Uh, thank God he is the propitiation for us. What a blessing that is. And <laughs> that word and in verses one and two, that word and is the key to understanding the whole the whole passage, my beloved friend. Psalms 14, 2 and 3. He said, The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Then Isaiah 59 16 said he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation. What a blessing that is. I'm glad that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You know, my beloved friend, there's not a person in the world today that couldn't be saved by the grace of God if they'd just come to him, if they'd just put their faith and their trust in him with the finished work of the cross of Calvary, that Jesus Christ, his blood that was shed for them on the cross of Christ to pay their sin debt my beloved, and to pay the penalty for their sin. Amen. The propitiation, the penalty payment met. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your soul. Amen. Beloved friend, he said, have the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that hear us say, come, and let him that is a thirst come and take the water of life freely. I want to tell you, anybody and everybody wants to, my beloved can be saved by the grace of God. The whole world could be saved by the grace of God if they just turn to him today. I want to tell you, I, I reject this tulip doctrine. I reject this limited atonement. My beloved friend, I reject the idea that individuals are predestined to heaven or predestined to hell before they're ever born. Beloved friend, uh, Jesus has declared whosoever will, let him come and take a drink of the water of life freely. Jesus has declared Come unto me, all ye. And uh, God the Father declared, uh, my beloved, in the book of Isaiah, he said, look unto me, all ye, the ends of the earth, uh, and be ye saved. I want to tell you, whoever wants to can be saved by the grace of God if they had just come to him. But we, we notice also as we go on just a little bit further, Amen. We notice that uh, he's commanded unto us that we sin not, but we're not able to sin not, my beloved friend. And so we see in verses one and two that we need a propitiation for our sin. But then we can look again in verse number two. Notice what he said again in verse number two. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Again, my beloved, we can see that it's, it's, it's for the whole world. Hebrews 2 and 9 said, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for who? Every man, beloved friend. Hey man, that means everybody that's listening to the sound of my voice, anybody and everybody that wants to can be saved by the grace of God. Again, my beloved friend, I'm in Revelation 22 and 17. We quoted it to you just a moment ago. And the spirit of, and the bride say, come and let him that hear us say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. And then John 3, 16, that most well beloved of passages and best known passage in the word of God. We suppose, my beloved, John 3, 16, for God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My beloved friend, that whosoever means anybody and everybody that wants to can be saved by the grace of God. If they can receive forgiveness of sin, 
my beloved, and, and they can have their sin debt paid if they'll just put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. I'm so thankful for that. Thank God. Again, it's for the whole world, my beloved. And, and these that are out here who are preaching a limited atonement, my beloved friend, they are not preaching the truth of the word of God. They are preaching, my beloved, a gra grave and gross error at the very least. And, and beloved, they may be preaching heresy at the, at the worst. Beloved friend, that is not the truth of the word of God. Jesus Christ bled and died on the cross of Calvary for every man. God loves every man, woman, boy, and girl upon the face of the earth. And he said, it's not my will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I want to tell you, beloved friend, he'll save anybody and everybody that'll come to him by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. Beloved friend, we can go on just a little bit further. And we notice in verse number three, through verse number seven, he said, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know, know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Verse number seven, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. So we can see, my beloved friend, that those who know him keep his commandments. I want to tell you, beloved, if you're saved by the grace of God, uh, uh, my beloved, I, now you won't be perfect. You cannot live perfect, but I believe that you'll have a desire to. I believe you'll want to do what you can to please him. I believe you want, you'll want you walk just as close as you can, my beloved friend, to the cross. I believe you'll walk just as close as you can to the dictates of God according to to this book, my beloved friend, the word of God. I do believe that, beloved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10. Now, now, uh, 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 just about everybody, my beloved friend, that's considered a, 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 a fundamental Baptist or considered evangelical or whatever the case might be, uh, just about everybody, my beloved friend, uh, they love Ephesians 2, 89. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Man, we love that. But beloved friend, we don't need to stop there. I believe we every time that we quote Ephesians 2, 89, I believe we ought to go to, uh, right ahead and quote Ephesians 2, 10 along with it. And he sa uh, said, my beloved, he said in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I want to tell you, beloved friend, he saved, saved us by grace through faith, amen, and created us in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, he saved us by grace through faith unto good works. He didn't save us because of our works. My beloved friend, we never got salvation because of our works. We didn't get salvation because of anything that we did. We're not saved right now because of our works. We're not saved right now because of anything that we can do. And beloved friend, when it comes down to the end of the way, we'll not be saved because of our works. We'll not be saved because of anything that we have done, but we'll be saved because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. But my beloved friend, he created us in Christ uh, to unto good works. That is, he created us, my beloved, amen, to walk in Christ unto good works uh, according to the dictates of, and the commands of this book, uh, according to that which pleases Christ. Uh, and so he created us in Christ uh, unto good works. Those that know him keep his commandments, my beloved. Amen. In 1 Peter 1 and 23, he said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. God demands a new birth. You've got to be made a new creation in Christ, my beloved friend. You must have a, a, a new birth experience. And if you've never had that new birth experience, beloved friend, you don't know Christ. You've never been saved by the grace of God. 
Jesus declared unto Nicodemus three different times in John chapter 3, you must be born again. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then again, he said, "If a man, uh, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And, and again, he said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born again. He said, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. I, beloved friend, uh, uh, God uh, demands a new birth experience. You've got to come to know Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you're saved by the grace of God, beloved friend, the very millisecond that you, that you put your faith in, and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're made a new creation in Christ. And those who know him, my beloved, want to keep his commandments. They want to please him. Beloved friend, John uh, 3, again, in verse number 3, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 and 5, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And uh, the Bible tells us, beloved, and, 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 and that, that word, a man born of water and of the Spirit, I believe that the reference to water there is speaking to the power of the Word of God. In Ephesians 5 and 26, he said that he might sanctify and cleanse it, talking about the church, with the washing of the water by the Word. And so Jesus said in John 3 and 5, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the the kingdom of God. And then uh, John 7, uh, 3, 7, and 8, marvel not that I said unto thee that you must be born again. And I use the example that Jesus gives here of somebody that's been born again in the last uh, uh, episode, but I'm going to quote it again. And Jesus tells us there in John 3, 7, and 8, he said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and men hear the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. I want to tell you, beloved friend, just like when the wind blows, you cannot see the wind itself, but you can see the effects of the, of the wind. Beloved friend, if you've been born of God, you've been born of the Spirit of and of the word of God, my beloved, um, human beings cannot see the word of God and the power of God working in your life. But beloved friend, they can see the effects of that new birth. They can see, beloved friend, just as you look out and you see the effects of the wind as it begins to blow and the trees begin to move and to sway and the leaves begin to move, my beloved, and, and the flowers and the bushes and, and the grasses begin to bend and to move in the direction that the wind is blowing. You cannot see the wind itself, beloved friend, but you can certainly see the effects of the wind. So is everyone that's born of God, my beloved friend. If you've been born again, if you've been born of God, if you've been born from above, if you've been born of the Spirit and the power of God, uh, uh, human beings cannot look upon your heart and see your heart, my beloved friend, but they certainly can look upon the effects of the Spirit of God in your life, and they can see the change in you, and they can take knowledge of you, just like they did with Peter and James and John they and the other disciples. They knew that they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I want to tell you, beloved, what a blessing that is. Amen. Those that know him, according to verses 3 through 7 of 1 John chapter 2, those who know him keep his commandments. What a blessing that is. Then, we, we beloved friend, he, he tells us in in uh, uh, verse number seven, we'll look at verse number seven again. And he said in, in verse number seven uh, of, of first John chapter two, brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Thank God. Verse uh, number seven again, even though he gave an old commandment, and a new commandment, the way to God is not new. It's always been by faith. What a blessing that is. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 
1 and verse number 2, he said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. I want to tell you, beloved friend, amen, even though that it might have been under a different economy in the Old Testament, the Old Testament saints, my beloved, may have lived under a different economy than you and I do. But I want to tell you, beloved, it was by grace through faith for them, just like it's grace through faith for us. It's always been by faith, no matter what age that men lived in. Thank God, it's uh, men have always been saved by grace through faith. And Hebrews 11 declares that to us, said that by it, the elders of obtained a good re uh, report through faith, my beloved. And we have the example. It begins with Abel, said by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. And it goes on further, and we say by faith. He said by faith, Noah, being warned of God, moved with fear, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, and became heir of righteousness, by faith. What a blessing that is. And again, Moses, when he came by faith, uh, Moses, when he came to years, uh, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, uh, but uh, choosing to set, uh, uh, rather uh, to set affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. I want to tell you, beloved friend, it's always been by faith and it will always be by faith, even though he gave an old commandment and a new commandment. The way to God is not new. It has always been by faith, my beloved. What a blessing that is. Then in Habakkuk 2 and 4, four different places in the word of God, in Habakkuk 2 and 4, and Romans 1 and 17, Galatians 3 11, and Hebrews 10 and 38. Beloved friend, the word of God declares that the just shall live by faith. It's only by grace. By grace through faith are we saved, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. What a blessing that is. I'm glad, my beloved friend, it's always been by grace through faith, and it's and it'll always be by grace through faith. And and, and listen, beloved friend, I mean, uh, uh, the Old Testament writer said in one place, if thou wouldst mark iniquity, then who, Lord, could stand? Not a one of us, beloved. There's none that doeth righteousness. No, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. There is none righteous. No, not one. There's nobody, my beloved, in and of themselves who can do right, my beloved beloved friend, and uh, not a just man upon the earth, again, as Solomon declared, not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but oh, what a blessing. Thank God I'm glad that Jesus came into this world, bled and died for us on the cross of Calvary, and made a way that we could be saved by the grace of God. What a blessing that is. I'm so thankful, my beloved friend. And uh, Habakkuk, uh, in, in Romans uh, 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 10, 38, they all three say the just shall live by faith. But what Habakkuk actually said was the just shall live by his faith. I want to tell you, beloved friend, you're not going to get into heaven on uh, mama's apron springs, uh, strings or, or uh, holding on to daddy's belt loop. You're not going to get into heaven, my beloved, because you came from a Christian family. You're not going to get into heaven, my beloved, because somebody sprinkled you with water when you were a little baby and declared you to be Christianized. I want to tell you, beloved friend, you're going to have to answer for yourself and yourself alone. The just shall live by his faith, not by somebody else's faith. You can't get this thing by signing your name on a card. You can't get this thing, my beloved friend, because you, be, you were born in into a family that's called Christian or because somebody else before you you could know right from wrong declared you to be Christian and sprinkled you with water or poured water over your head. I'm here to tell you, beloved, you're going to have to put your faith and your trust in the finished work of the cross of Calvary individually for yourself, my beloved. The just shall live by his faith. I'm going to have to stand before God and I'm going to have to answer for myself and myself alone. And when you come before God, you're, you'll stand before God and you'll answer for yourself 
and yourself alone. I never will forget back years ago when I was pastoring my first church, and this was along the time that uh, uh, Jimmy Swaggered and Jim Baker messed up along that t period of time. And uh, I was asked by one of the ladies from the church to go visit her son. And he was an, an over-the-road a, a, a truck driver. And uh, she told me, she said, the only time you can talk to him is on Saturday. Said he comes in late Friday evening, and then he's at home on Saturday, and he leaves out early Sunday morning and goes back on the road. Said that's the only time that you'll have a chance to talk to him. And so I agreed to, to go to his house and to talk to him. Uh, for his mother. And so I, I sat down with him, me and a couple other men, and we began to talk to him, began to witness to him about the, the Lord. And and uh, he, he and then he brought up Jim Baker and he brought up uh, uh, Jimmy Swaggart and, 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 and the things that was reported that they had done as an excuse for him not uh, trusting Christ. And and he, he said, if, they, if they're going to heaven, I'm just as good as they are. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go to heaven too. And I, I told him, I said, I've got one, just one thing I want to say to you, and then I'm going to have prayer, and then I'm going to leave, and I want you to think about it. And I said, I'm just going to say one last thing to you. I said, but when you stand before God, uh, God is not going to, and give an account to him at the great white throne judgment. God is not going to look over at Jim Baker, and God is not going to look over to G at Jim Sw Jimmy Swagger and ask them why that you didn't get saved and you didn't trust Christ. And I told him, I said, when you stand before God, you're going to answer for yourself. And I said, Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker are going to answer for themselves. Every man, every woman, every boy and every girl is going to answer for themselves alone and not for anybody else. And and then I had prayer and I left. And, and then uh, later on that evening, uh, that man's mother called me and she said, I wanted to let you know, said my son, after that you left, after you had prayer and you left, he said, he got to thinking about what you said. And she said, he just called me, said he got to thinking about what you said and said he knelt down by his coffee table and he asked the Lord to forgive him of his sin and come into his heart. And he accepted the Lord as his savior. And I want to tell you, beloved friend, that, that that's what it's required. See, he had a good godly mother. But I'm here to tell you, beloved, mama couldn't save him. And I don't care how good your parents are. I don't care how good a mama you got, how good a daddy you got. They can't save you. They can't answer for you. Nobody else can answer for you. And there will not be any excuse that you can make. You can't point to the man down the road or the lady down the road that might have lived rougher than you than you did and use them as an excuse for you not receiving Christ as your personal savior, everybody is going to answer for himself or herself alone. And, and, and he declared in Habakkuk two and four, the just shall live by his faith. I want to tell you, beloved friend, uh, old commandment and new commandment alike, old Testament, new Testament alike, everybody that ever has been saved, everybody that is saved and everybody that will be saved or saved by grace through faith. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. I hope I've been able to say something that was a blessing to somebody and a help and a strength and encouragement. And if you're listening to me and you've never been saved by the grace of God, I beg of you, would you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you cry out to him? And would you confess to him that you're a sinner? Would you ask him to forgive you of your sin and ask him to save you today? Beloved friend, he said, whosoever, uh, Romans 10 and 13, he's promised, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You'll be saved by the grace of God. Well, as I said, I hope that it's been a blessing to you. And if it has, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you could email me or, or comment, in uh, whether, whether it's on Sermon Audio or YouTube or Facebook or however you're hearing it, if you could make a comment and, and let me know if it's been a blessing to you. And if you could uh, uh, like on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and uh, if you could share uh, my message uh, messages with others, I'd appreciate it. And so we have the intent, by the help of the grace of God, to teach our way entirely through the book of First John. And this will be the third 
uh, uh, this is the third message in, in the book of First John, and we've got quite a few to go, Lord willing. So till we meet again, God bless you, is my prayer.